Hello and welcome to the script case video. My name is Jamie Oates and I'm your host today. In today's video, we will be creating with script case, a pizza restaurant management platform within which we will have QR codes for viewing the menus and so forth. So what we're going to be doing is actually building this platform. If I log in here, we have then first of all the security. We here can, I'm, I should note that currently I'm logged in and um, the customer ID is also reserved because I've previously already entered it within the script case panel and I do not have security enabled within the development environment. So this is very important to note because I can see here the customer reservations as well as the reservation menu items which is what customers would generally be able to see. So when a customer logs into this platform they will see here their, their personal reservations they will also see here a QR menu, which they can then scan with their phone, which will then open up, for instance, here, the pizza menu. Now the pizza menu then opens and then they can select the pizza that they want and make requests for reservations and see what they have on the menu. OK, so this is just a, a basic template for you to start working with. Of course, there is quite a few, quite a few elements here that I would or you would generally want to apply to this. But in the straight form, it's for you to be able to accept reservations and take reservations with your customers as well as provide them a QR code menu for them to view what items you have available within the restaurant. So then for the admin area, we have here the reservations where we can view the stages of res reservations, whether they've been confirmed, uh, the categories, which are then for the menu items here. So when we have here the category pizzas, it links here to the pizza menu and we have here the URL which links the two items so we can add more um, applications here, more menu items quite easily and then just link them to the new application and then they will be generating QR codes for the customer then to view. We have then also the subcategories, the entire restaurant menu so here we can add restaurant well, menu items to the restaurant, uh, set the status, upload images and also well, obviously manage the restaurant menu items. Uh, we have our country codes as well as the documents associated to each country, which are then basically used for users and so forth. So then we have the security where we can manage our users, the applications, the groups, as well as the user groups, as well as the grouped applications. So here, for instance, we can manage the applications available for a specific user. We can synchronize new applications when the developer has created new applications. We can synchronize them and change our password as well as then simply log out from the system, bringing us back to the login page. Now the platform itself, we, we've generally made quite a few changes here from usual and there are a few other changes that I would uh, continue to make and I will mention them as we go along within the build of the platform. Now to start building the platform, we will be needing the database, which is here, the DB restaurant. So if I zoom in a little here, we have here DB Restaurant, and there we have the following tables. So here we have Sec Apps. Now within this table, we manage then all of the application names. The application type is listed here, as well as the description. Now when you generate the security and you have a description enabled or um, added within the uh, applications, then they will also be added here. If you then add the security afterwards it will be automatically generated added here and if you add them add the applications afterwards you will have to manually add the description here if you want to continue displaying that we then also have the security groups which is then typically administrator and customers in this scenario and then we have the group apps so here within the group apps we have the group id the application name that is accessible and then the privacy access so whether they can access the application in the first place whether they're able to insert delete update export and print using the relevant applications indicated within the app name field the sec log table will uh, enable a logging of logged in users so once you've logged in you will start having that information here so it will then display the username the date they logged in uh, some session uh, data as well as then the ip address we can expand on any of these tables and of course within the code within the script case quite easily and add extra elements or tables or fields or whatever we need to our applications. 
So for the SEC users, we have the login field, we have a password field, the name, email, whether the account is active, and an activation code, which is generated and sent by the security platform, which is also generated by the by Scriptcase. So whether they have pri admin privileges, so this is then also um, indicated with this single field here. Within SEC user groups, we have the login admin, customer user, and customer user two. So we already have three accounts here. So the main account being admin, which is what I just basically logged in with, but noted as with, without having security enabled, I was still able to view the customer information and so on. So when that was live online, admin, for instance, would not see here, if I come back here to the menu, would not see here the customer reservations. If I zoom in here, Customer reservations here will be the hidden, we can hide that, as well as the menu items that we have here. Uh, we can leave the toppings menu item or the pasta menu or whichever of these we want enabled for the admin simply by updating them within the applications. And that is then here within the group apps that we, we saw here previously. Okay, so then we have the, the sec user groups. So we have then the login is then also tied to each group ID here. So we have the set groups here, and then these two tables are then joined basically with here, this group ID. And returning back here to groups, we can see then the description of each group and so forth. Okay, so the, the main tables that actually come with the platform, so with this project, so each of these sec tables that we see here, these are each generated or created by the script case platform when we generate the security. So there's no need to actually create these. In general, um, it's best to actually create a new table and then add uh, relevant items into those new tables that you want to maybe attach to uh, a user, say a user profile or also something like this in, in, that, in that sort of case. Okay, so then we have here the confirmation. So this is where we start to get to the confirmations for the reservations. We have here the ID confirmation field, the customer reservation stage, the admin reservation stage, and the confirmation date, as well as then the ID reservation. Okay, so that's the table down here. So linking those two tables together. And if we look at the data that we're collecting in here, we have, first of all, some IDs, some references. So we have one, two, or four, 10 for the stages. The admin reservation stage is also then indicated the confirmation date and then the reservation ID. Okay, so in countries, we list then our countries and country documents. So each country document is then tied to a country using here the ID country. And then we have then following that the customer table. And the customer table was simply collecting the number of the document that they are presenting. So here from country uh, documents, the customer name, birthday, gender, phone number one and two, the address, the country ID, which is then the TB countries, uh, the user's login, uh, sec users, and doc country or ID doc X country. Okay, so which is then the country documents here also. Okay, so then we have then the TB menu category. So here we're defining the categories for the menu. And if we remember here, that's a, that are these um, applications that we've put together here, that's actually presenting the menu items. Okay, so there we have the category pizzas, and then that is linked using the URL from the application right there. Okay, so I'll, of course I'll go, sh go through that, how to actually get this URL. And note that then of course that when we push this project live to a hosting, these URLs would need to be updated with the relevant new URLs. So in that case there, you would, for instance, remove all of this here and then define the new URL. Okay, so then we have our TB menu images. So here we're actually defining the images for each menu category. So we have pizza, salami, cheese, lasagna, and spaghetti, as well as then the subcategory ID for each of these. Now that then links here to the menu subcategories, where we then give it a subcategory of salami pizza, nice pizza, margarita pizza, ham, cheese, salami, special sauce, listing the drinks and, and basically the menu items that we have available. Okay, so then the TB reservations, here looking at the structure first of all, we have here the ID reservation, which if you remember was also registered up here in the TB confirmations. And then we have the reservation date, reservation time, the number of hours, the reservation end time, 
the people, as in how many people are attending, the customer ID, the ID stage, as well as then the system date time, which is then captured. Okay, so viewing the data, we can then see that we have then time dates, or dates and times, the number of hours indicated, the reservation end time, so when the reservation finishes for the table, so we can prepare for the next guests. And then we have then the amount of people that will be attending, the customer ID that actually um, registered this, as well as then the stage of the process, also the reservation. And then the system date time when this actually in was initiated. Okay, so then we have the TV restaurant menu. So coming at the structure first. We have here the ID menu, the header, the description, price, outstanding image, subcategory ID and category ID. So linking here the subcategory and category tables, as well as then the active status. So we can basically display it or hide it. So looking at the data, we can see here for the header, we are just using a simple name. So here, Coca-Cola, cold can of drink, or cold, cold drink, whichever you like. Uh, the price for the item, as well as then the main image for this, the subcategory ID, the category ID, as well as then the active status. So changing this status from one to zero, for instance, would then hide the item. And we then apply that within our application. Okay, so then we also have our TB stages, which then indicates the ID stage, and then the stage info. So here we have reserved, confirmed, and canceled. And we then just capture these within our application and apply them to relevant fields. Okay, so during this during this project, I've also then used uh, some resources. So first of all, I've used here FreePick to use images for the um, restaurant items, as well as the logo which I've taken from this one here. So thank you, thank you, Sergi. Uh, it's a really cool logo. I like that, so I use that within the application. Okay, so then starting off with script case, we need to then first of all log in to our script case application. Uh, once script case has started up, we can then start by creating a new project. Okay, so I'm going to start by creating a blank project. And here I will call it Pizzeria. Pizzeria and underscore QR. Okay, so for the description, I can add a description and also it's a house menu with QR code. And then if I wanted to, I can add some additional project here. So here, let's add then QR code with uh, menu items. Okay. And then we can go ahead here and add an icon. So what I'm going to do then is first of all, select the menu here on the left hand side and choose here the project tab. And then I will start to upload some general images. So if I come here to file and upload, and then I will use or choose select the files. Okay, and then I'm just going to pick out the files quickly that I have on my desktop and upload them. So I won't be using all of these within the script case application. For instance, the menu items, I'm just gonna add them here anyway, because then that also adds then the uh, capability to use them within the project without having to actually add them for products. So if I wanted to reuse these images for a background within the application, then I can use them or so forth. Okay, so once they've been up uploaded, okay. Then what I'm going to do then is basically select here just the pizza icon small. Okay, there it is. There it is now, pizza icon small. So as I mentioned here, the, uh, the BG background we will more than likely use. These other images, that we will be uploading these within the applications that we create as there will be for the restaurant menu items that we have. And then the icons, we can use these within the application. So if I select here, first of all, it's icon small, and then we have here the icon for our project. If I go next, I will choose here the MySQL database. Now I don't need a password for my database, it's local, and I just use it for this project. So I will then just type in here DB 
and we have then there the DB restaurant and I can test the connection and see that the connection was a success. Now here for the connection we can also vary or apply uh, security, use SSL, add then the client key certificate as well as the CA certificate or uh, define a cipher. We also have filter options and some advanced options here for the client encoding if we want a persistent connection as well as to use the schema for the uh, table names. Okay, so from there I can just go ahead and click next. And our project is now then linked with that database. So I can add here languages. So if I wanted to, I can add more languages here. So if I go ahead and say, because it's a restaurant, pizza restaurant, I'm going to go ahead and add Italian. I'll say Italian is Italy. I go add. I'll leave them both as UTF-8 for the character set, which is what I also have the database at. Then I'll go next. And then here I can choose then the template that I'm using. So because it's a pizza restaurant, I was, I was thinking fiery red. So I'm going to set here the SC9 Grave as the default. And here I will remove the sweet blue because it won't be needed within the project. So there's really no need to have multiple themes to basically uh, take up space. So then I'll just select this one, set it as default and go create. Okay, so we're presenting now, first of all, with the option to create a new application. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cancel that out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to project and select default values. Okay, so here in default values, I basically want to apply the same logo for all applications. So whenever I create an application, I don't want the script case logo there. I want the logos that I've actually uploaded here. So I'll open up the image manager, open up here the project, and I place them here in general images. I thought that's where I put them to. Okay, so I'm going to have to add, upload them again. So let me come back here to upload. It's odd. And then I'll just add here the logos that I want to add. So let me just quickly find that. Okay. Open those. Okay, so then I'm going to select here again the icon small. So add that. And that will now apply the logo the pizza icon logo to all of the applications I create uh, if if and when we display a header of course. Okay so then we can apply various other settings here and we can change automatically our uh, common settings for all of our applications globally. So here we also have the option to use suite alerts we can enable or disable this and then choose where we want to have this applied. So I'm going to apply this directly um, top center instead of to the right and then I'm going to view here the grid and the grid I don't want the grid to be a hundred percent I want this to be a little shorter so here I would now apply 90 and set and leave the width at in as percent okay so for the form I want to apply the same it was 90 and percent okay so note that on the bottom of these we can also change the header for the templates, we will be creating custom custom header templates for the application, as well as then we can apply them then globally as we then create them. Okay, so I'm just going to update that now as it is. So we can make all global changes there to all of our applications. So that also that includes down the bottom here. So if I view back here on the form, we have here all of the menu items. So we can actually adjust this, for instance, Personally, I, I hate everything on the left-hand side, depending on the application, and some of these I, I prefer to actually move these around. So here, I will move here the buttons straight away on the toolbars over to the right-hand side. And here, let's leave those, and let's go ahead and apply here the refresh on all applications. So it's there, and if we don't want it, we can just simply remove it. Here, the reload, okay. And that's actually on a form, so ideally we want that on the grid, but let's add that anyway. Because on some forms we may want that when we are editing information and we want values to be updated. 
So then if I come here also to the grid and scroll down again to the bottom, I have here the main menu items. So mobile and then here for our grid menu. Okay, so here we have here dynamic search and basic search over in the center. So I'm going to move those over to the left. So I'll move them all the way up here. And that is then applied to all of my applications straight away. And we have here then the export options. Now I won't be using JSON any of the applications, so I'll get rid of those. And here the line, I will move that down between the form buttons and then the buttons that are available within the grid application. So now here, I then also want to include the reload button again. So if I select that and choose to insert it, it is now below here the save grid and we have the, the reload which will be applied to all of our grid applications. Okay, so it's really good to have a look through these and see whatever options you have there because then you can apply them globally to all applications before you even start creating them and save yourself uh, quite some time for a typical layout that you would want to have applied within your project. Okay, so now I've done that, I can then start to actually create my applications. But first I'm going to create a folder and I'll call this an, the admin folder and create that. And again, I'm going to close here the new application which is being presented again. And I'm going to again go here to the top menu and application and batch applications. Okay, and what I want to do then is create here the country documents. So that I want a form and a grid. And for countries, I just want to have a form. So then I will then go next. I can add then here the description, which as mentioned previously, will be then be added into the security tables. So if I add here uh, country um, admin list, okay, country documents admin, and then we can add that here into into our description, and that is then going to be added into our database and which is then also going to be seen within the back end for easier um, administration of your applications. Okay, so then here for the countries table, I want to change here the type and I'm going to change that here to say editable grid. And then you can generate the source and also select to edit. So I'll finish. I want to generate the applications and then it's going to open them as well as then create each of them so that they are automatically linked. So by using now the batch application, I've automatically linked the form and grid for country documents, which is the, two, the table I had selected to generate the, the two, so form and grid. And we're going to have them now open up. Okay, so the form countries, and there we have the form country documents. And there we also have the form, well, the grid country document. So if I run here, for instance, the grid country documents, we'll automatically now have the add new added to this, and it is automatically linked to the form, okay? And also here, the edit option for our grid items, so that I can go back. And notice how we also have now the reload on each of these the line here between the add new and reload option so then we can just click reload and that is then available on each grid immediately okay so one thing i'm going to do here for the grid documents i'm going to first of all come here to settings i'm going to select here the vertical alignment to top and run the application again okay and see how that's now moved the the grid to the top of the application. Okay, so now we can then continue with the rest of the rest of this. If I come here to layout, header and footer, and then here I have title and date. And then what I want to do here is actually apply a different header. Okay, but all we can actually do here right now is actually change these two individual settings. So if I come here to settings, and then here I have the option to change the header template. And then we have 
clicking the option there for the drop menu we have then the option to apply different layouts and headers to our application so what I want to do is actually create a new one for this project and if I come here to layout and then HTML templates and then what I'm going to do is here select create a new template and I will call it header template and I'll say here main header okay and for mode I'm going to select project and then save okay so now if I scroll all the way down we have here now project main header and it has opened it now here available for us okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy and paste the header over from the one I created previously and we can see here that we have then a basic table a basic HTML table with some um, basic styling and then at the bottom here we have first of all which is really important we have here the CSS cab and then underscore CSS cab which is then for script case okay identification which is really important to include and then we can add our fields by then indicating nm cab and then underscore logo and then underscore cab title so here what I've done is I've created two fields okay so the first one here is then for the logo and then the second one here will then display the title so if I save that okay now what I want to do is while we're here I want to go ahead and create two more so first of all I'm going to again create a new template and this time I'm going to call it menu underscore header and th this way they're going to be available for us later and then again I'll go mode project and save okay and then here if I paste that in here we have then this time a slightly different alignment that's all it is so I'm just styling it slightly differently again providing different names for the items that will be displayed within the new header so I'll save that and we can see here we have then the menu header and the main header and then I'm going to create one more and then I'm going to call this one logo header okay and that way what we will have is then three different headers available to choose from which we can then apply to different applications within our project and all it is is just different styling different layout uh, and then indicating or providing the fields which are needed for those applications that we want to have so now we have here within the project logo header main header and menu header okay so that's now available within the HTML template and um, the application will will not display the header there straight away now so what I'm gonna have to do is close the application and then open it back up again and then if I come back here to layout and then settings I should now if I scroll down and I have project and I have each of those headers available okay so for, for this application I'm going to apply then the main header so main header save that and I come back here to header and footer and I have here then the logo which will be an image so we can then select from the image manager again the logo which has been uploaded previously so logo small add that and then we have here the title which is then we, what we want to apply here so here I just have country documents okay and then if I run that now we then have our grid with logo and our title all ready to go okay so there would be a few other elements that we can change in here for instance um, you may not want to have the layout that we've got here now one thing I'll probably do is because what we have on the other one is first of all we want to apply here the ID country so we can identify which country it is we need to then remove here the ID country as well um, and basically what would be good is to group that so if I come back here into the application again and come here to edit fields with an edit fields then if I take ID country out leave ID country and just move that up and then we can just change the name of that and the same here we can type and country and save that okay and then we can run the application again and we can see then that we already have a different layout okay 
and then if I come down here to group by and static group by create a new group by here I'll apply the name country and apply the name country or the label and then we can move in here the ID country and if I run that again we'll now have those grouped by country okay and then we want to still change the field so if I come here to fields and ID country I can then use here the automatic lookup create select use choosing then the country table so the countries and then the country field to be shown choose the connection and then run that again and then we have there our country documents table with country names ready to go okay so we still need to change then the form so if I come here to country documents and run that Okay, and then we have here the country field which we need to change so if I come in here to edit fields first of all we don't want here the ID country document to be displayed again change the name to country and then here document type okay and then for the data type we can change it here already to select and save that and now our field here will automatically be ready as a select field and we can again use the lookup settings to create a select and choose here the countries and the country name and then choose the connection now I like to use a title so I'm going to use a title there so if I now go run and then we have our form with country fields okay so we need to apply our header here so we'll come here to uh, layout settings and then we change here our header to main header and come back to header and footer and then we can apply here again the image that we have and that and then also the title Okay, so then I can run the form again. There's one other thing I want to change here, which was then the the position of, so if I come back here to settings and the vertical alignment to top, and then run that again. And we will now have our form ready to go. Okay. Okay, so we still need to set here a unique key. And then what we can do then, because we, it being a country document when we actually have these fields we want to make sure that the same country doesn't apply the same type of document multiple times so then here what we do is then select here the document type and ID country and add those and that will then join those two fields and make sure that they are unique accordingly so if I run that again and our form is now complete Okay, so we could make further changes here with the menu, uh, what is available down here if we want to have single, a uh, single entry. Of course, maybe a multiple entry here would, would be nice, but for that reason we have here, of course, the grid application, which then opening that, we can then manage the country documents. Okay, so here I'll maybe disable here the details, so I'm going to do that quickly. So I'll come into settings, sorry, grid modules. And here I will remove the detail summary and the chart. I'll leave the search. We can leave the search there. And if you wanted to, of course, you can go ahead and customize that. Because if you view search now, for instance, if I click search, it then opens up like so. And then we still need to customize these fields accordingly. So I'm not going to do that, but um, the options there, and then you can just remove them if you want to do that. Okay, so then the next application we have here is then the form country so let me just run that quickly so my browser just quickly crashed sorry about that 
to come back here to Pizzeria QR and we'll just come here to the countries form. Okay, so let me run that again. Okay, so then from here we have then our multiple edit, we have then the country ID, so we come here then to fields, we can hide the ID, we really don't need that. And we want to set then here in settings, the vertical alignment to top, and then let's have a quick look at that. And we then just need to apply our header in, in this app grid or well in this form application okay so we then come here to layout again settings we can then change the header to the main header visit header and footer and we now have our specified header fields available so here image choose the logo choose them within the project applications here general images add selected and then we have here the title countries. Now do note that we can change then the title here. We have insertion title and update title. So I do place them both as the same generally. So it really depends on what's wanted within the application. But then here, for instance, we could say add country or new add, yeah, adding maybe or add. And then here update so that you know which form exactly you're viewing. But in this case, you can see that we're having here the multi-edit form and we can basically, well, the edit grid. So we can basically edit these and then just save the information. Okay, so here we want to actually set a unique key also. The unique key here needs to be the country. So then here I'll select the country field, add that, save the form, and then we should be good to go. So let's run that and have a quick look. Okay, so we now have our pizza administration page finished and we're then ready for the next form. Okay, before we do that though, we're going to first of all close the forms that we have open at the moment. And then here within admin, we're going to create a new folder and this one I'm going to call menu. Create that. I'm going to create another folder inside of that. Call that subcategory and create that. Uh, return back to the admin. And here we can create a new folder again. This one I'll call reservations. Okay. And then if I'm going to come out of that into root. And here I will also create a new folder called menu. Another folder called reservations. And then the final folder, which will be the security folder, will be automatically created via here the module security when we have when we have finished creating all of our applications. Okay, so that's it for part one. Uh, we'll be back again shortly in part two of the script case training and we'll then continue with this um, restaurant application and start building our menu up next. So in the next video, we'll start to then create our menu applications, which we have just created the folders here for menu within the admin and here in the root folder menu. So then we have the custom menu items basically and then the administration pages available for the admin. Check back soon and I'll see you again part two.